Batman's Arkham suit represents the absolute zenith of superhero engineering. Visually, it is a seamless blend of heavy infantry armor and ninja mobility, a walking tank that somehow moves like a gymnast. But, have you ever stopped to consider if an ordinary human could actually function inside it? Most people assume the biggest barrier to becoming Batman is the martial arts mastery or the billion dollar bank account. The reality is much simpler and much more dangerous. Today we're breaking down the Arkham suit using real world material science, biomechanics and thermodynamics to see if a human body can actually survive wearing it. We'll cover the crushing operational weight, the lethal internal heat, the impossible energy requirements, and the staggering financial cost of the Dark Knight's gear. First, we have to deconstruct the visual layers of the Arkham suit to understand the mass we're dealing with. The lore describes it as a titanium triweave overlay with magnetic impact plating over a flexible ballistic undersuit. Translating that into real-world engineering, we are likely looking at grade 5 titanium plates, an alloy used in aerospace for its high strength to weight ratio, backed by layers of UHMWPE or ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene. This composite is lighter than steel and stronger than Kevlar, but lighter doesn't mean light. When you calculate the total loadout, the numbers get scary fast. You have the ballistic chest and back plates, the armored pauldrons, the segmented gauntlets, the greaves on the shins, and the steel-toed boots. Then you add the cowl, which is packed with lead lining and electronics, and the cape. In the Arkham games, the cape is made of a memory cloth that becomes rigid when electrified. In reality, a material capable of gliding would be a heavy, multi-layered polymer fabric, easily weighing 10 to 15 pounds on its own. Add the utility belt filled with lead and steel gadgets, and you are looking at a total load between 60 and 90 pounds. Now, a modern Marine might carry 90 pounds of gear, but that load is concentrated in a rucksack designed to transfer weight to the hips. Batman wears his weight on his extremities. This introduces a physics problem known as distal weight. By placing heavy titanium armor on your forearms and shins, you are drastically increasing the moment of inertia for your limbs. Think about the mechanics of a punch. Your shoulder muscles have to generate enough torque to accelerate that heavy gauntlet, stop it at the point of impact, and then instantly retract it to block. Flying in this suit would feel like trying to box while wearing a tuxedo made of car tires. Your movements would be sluggish and telegraphic. You couldn't snap a jab, you'd have to heave it. That split second delay is all a thug needs to land a hit. And when that hit lands, we run into the ballistic reality that movies ignore. It's called backface deformation. Let's say a thug shoots you in the chest. The titanium and polyethylene plate stops the bullet from penetrating your heart. That's the good news. The bad news is that the kinetic energy of that bullet, roughly 500 joules from a 9mm, doesn't just disappear. It transfers into the plate, which deforms inward, delivering a massive blunt force impact to your sternum. It feels less like being bulletproof and more like being hit in the chest with a sledgehammer. Even if the armor holds, you are looking at cracked ribs, severe bruising, and potential organ rupture. If you take a burst of automatic fire, the cumulative blunt trauma could collapse a lung or stop your heart, even without a single bullet piercing the skin. So the weight makes you slow and the armor leaves you broken. But if the kinetic energy doesn't stop you, the environment inside the suit definitely will. This is the aspect of Batman's existence that movies and comics almost universally ignore the thermodynamics of high-intensity combat inside a sealed system. We need to look at your body not just as a machine that punches people, but as a biological furnace. When you are engaging in what the game calls free-flow combat, which is essentially high-intensity interval training mixed with gymnastics, your metabolic rate skyrockets. An elite athlete performing at that level generates a massive amount of thermal energy. We are talking about upwards of 1,000 watts of heat output. In a t-shirt and shorts, your body manages this through perspiration. You sweat, the air moves over your skin, the sweat evaporates, and that phase change from liquid to gas pulls heat away from your body. It's an elegant, millions of years old cooling system. But the Arkham suit breaks that system entirely. Remember, Batman operates in Gotham, a city constantly under threat from Scarecrow's fear toxin and the Joker's laughing gas. To survive, the suit must be hermetically sealed. It has to be airtight to filter out chemical and biological agents. This means there is zero airflow. You are effectively wearing a wetsuit made of tire rubber wrapped in insulation plated in titanium. Inside that suit, the humidity hits 100% almost instantly. When the relative humidity surrounding your skin reaches that saturation point, evaporation stops. Your sweat has nowhere to go. It just pools in your boots and makes the undersuit slippery. 
it creates a wet bulb environment where your body loses the ability to cool itself down. The heat you are generating has nowhere to escape, so it turns inward, cooking your internal organs. In this scenario, your core body temperature would rise rapidly. Within 10 to 15 minutes of fighting, about the length of one predator room encounter, you would enter the early stages of heat stroke. Your vision would blur, your coordination would vanish, and you would likely vomit inside your cowl. In a real fight, a confused, overheating fighter is a dead fighter. The only engineering solution to this is an active cooling system similar to what astronauts wear under their EVAs or what Formula One drivers use in hot races. You would need a liquid cooling garment, a mesh of tubing running against your skin pumping chilled water to pull the heat away. But this introduces a new nightmare, weight and complexity. Now you need a reservoir of water, a pump, a radiator to dump the heat, and a power source to run it all. Water weighs one kilogram per liter. To keep you cool for a night on patrol, you're adding another 10 to 15 pounds of bulk to a suit that is already crushing you. And that brings us to the engine that drives the whole machine. To move that weight, run those cooling pumps, and power the suit's legendary tech, you need electricity and lots of it. You aren't just powering a flashlight, you are running a mobile supercomputer. First, you have detective mode. This isn't magic, it's a combination of LIDAR and sonar mapping, processing real-time 3D geometry on the entire environment, overlaying thermal feeds, and identifying weapons and heart rates. The processing power required to render that in real time with zero latency inside a helmet is staggering. Current battery technology is the hard limit here. Even with top-tier lithium polymer batteries, the kind used in high-end drones and EVs, energy density is a massive problem. To run this suit for electronics for an eight-hour patrol, you wouldn't just need a few AA batteries in your belt. You would need to carry a power bank the size and weight of a car battery. Lithium batteries are essentially chemical energy bombs waiting for a spark. In the Arkham games, Batman takes constant punishment. He gets shot, hit with lead pipes, and thrown through walls. If he is carrying high-density batteries on his chest or back, every one of those impacts is a potential catastrophe. If a bullet or a knife punctures that battery casing, you get thermal runaway. The battery vents superheated gas and burst in unquenchable chemical flames. You wouldn't just be defeated, you would be immolated inside your own armor. The shock gloves used in Arkham Origins are pure fantasy when it comes to power draw. To deliver enough amperage to instantly stun a grown man through layers of clothing requires a massive discharge. Doing that repeatedly, you would drain your entire power supply in three punches. The reality is, even if you could build the suit, you couldn't power it without tethering yourself to a wall outlet or risking a chemical fire on your torso. Even if the battery doesn't explode on your chest and the internal heat doesn't cook your organs, we still have to talk about the meat inside the metal. The single most dangerous gadget in Batman's entire arsenal isn't a bomb or a nerve toxin. It's the grapnel gun. In Arkham games, you constantly see Batman zip from the ground to a gargoyle 10 stories up in about two seconds flat. You are taking a mass of roughly 290 pounds. That's your 200 pound body plus the 90 pound suit and accelerating it from zero to 60 miles per hour almost instantaneously. In physics, this rapid change in acceleration is called jerk and it is devastating to the human body. A fighter pilot can handle high G-forces because they are strapped into an ejection seat that distributes the load across their entire back and thighs. But the grapnel gun applies all that downward force to one specific fragile point, your shoulder socket. When that high torque motor engages, thousands of newtons of force are yanked directly through your arm. Biomechanically, your glenohumeral joint is held together by the rotator cuff, specifically the supraspinatus tendon and the labrum. These tissues cannot withstand that level of sudden tension. The acceleration wouldn't just pull you up, it would suffer an avulsion fracture, effectively ripping your arm out of the socket and shearing the tendons right off the bone. You wouldn't be gliding over Gotham. You'd be screaming on the pavement with a detached limb. Then there is the landing. We all love the superhero landing, dropping 20 feet, landing on one knee, fist on the ground, looking incredible. The suit might have shock absorbing gel, but that only protects the surface impact. It doesn't stop your internal organs from continuing their downward momentum. When you hit the ground, your skeleton stops, but your brain keeps moving, slamming into the front of your cranium. This is the coupe contra coupe mechanism that causes CTE in football players, but magnified by the height of a four story building. You are looking at immediate concussions, spinal compression fractures, and shattered patellas. 
Finally, consider the cardiovascular demand. Fighting 20 armed men requires a VO max, the maximum rate of oxygen consumption, comparable to a Tour de France cyclist or an Olympic rower. But you are trying to achieve that output while wearing 80 pounds of restrictive plating that limits your chest expansion. Every breath becomes a battle against your own armor. You would be gasping for air through a cowl that restricts flow while your heart rate hits 200 beats per minute. You wouldn't look like a ninja. Within 30 seconds, you would be hyperventilating, your muscles would fill with lactic acid, and you would be unable to lift your arms to defend yourself. Can you actually afford to be Batman? We aren't talking about the cost of raw materials. Carbon fiber and titanium are expensive, but they aren't that expensive. The real cost is what we call the Bruce Wayne Premium, which comes from custom research, development, and fabrication. You cannot buy a bat cowl at a military surplus store. You have to commission it from scratch. Let's look at the closest real-world equivalent, the helmet for the F-35 Lightning II fighter jet. That helmet features an augmented reality HUD, night vision, and a thermal overlay that lets the pilot see through the plane. It costs roughly $400,000 per unit, but Batman's cowl is significantly more advanced. It needs real-time lidar mapping, structural analysis, detective vision, and it has to be bulletproof. You are easily looking at $2 million just for the helmet prototype and the software integration. Then you have the custom fabrication of the armor itself. Every plate of that tri-weave titanium has to be custom molded to your specific body measurements to allow for movement. If you are Bruce Wayne, you can't just hire a public engineering firm to build a tank suit and not expect questions. You need to set up shell companies, hire engineers for unrelated projects, compartmentalize the manufacturing so no one knows what the final product is, and buy silence. That bureaucratic laundering and security likely triples the cost of every single component. When you tally up the R&D, the custom fabrication, the advanced microelectronics, and the hush money, a single functional prototype of the Arkham suit would conservatively cost between $10 million and $15 million. And that is before you even think about building the car, which is a whole other financial nightmare. So what is the final verdict on the Dark Knight's armor? The Arkham suit is undeniably a masterpiece of visual design and fictional engineering. It looks incredible, and it sells the fantasy of being an unstoppable force of justice. But when you drag that design into the harsh light of reality, it fails the biological test completely. The sad truth is that it isn't the Joker, Bane, or an unlucky sniper shot that would kill you. It's simple physics. You would die from heat stroke before you threw your first punch, or you would dislocate your shoulder the first time you tried to grapple away. But hey, at least you'd look cool in the casket. If you want to see us apply the same level of ruinous science to the Batmobile, hit that like button and subscribe to Nerd Science.